Uh, oh, wow. Seems like AMD have just released all of the source code for their implementations of FSR3 in Unreal Engine 5 and DX12. Is the former likely to accelerate the uptake of FSR3 on console where its use is arguably more relevant than on PC? Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait until Mark Surdy is done brewing his secret quote-unquote pro source in the lab. Uh, P.S. If everyone is sad about E3, can I suggest Jeff Con just hires a couple more Jeffs? Then we can rename it to G3. <laughs> the Jeffs. Uh, That's only one step from G4, which... Uh, oh, my. We don't yeah, want to go been that there, route. That. Yeah. <laughs> G3 already exists, by the way. It was, it's a guitarist show. Just so everyone knows. Okay. It was a Power Mac G3 as well back in the day. Mm-hmm. True. Anyway, G3. Alex, well, this is a bit of a multi-tiered question, isn't it? Because FSR 3, the did have its um, release on GPU Open this week. And um, obviously it's just made a debut in um, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, where there have been changes since the initial quite promising but flawed implementation that we saw in Immortals of Avium and Mm. uh, Sporfoken. But there's a lot to unpack in this question. Where do you want to take it? Um, I guess uh, the proliferation aspect of it yes this will lead to a greater proliferation of it because otherwise to get fsr3 in a game beforehand you would have had to add direct collaboration with amd uh now you can just do it and do whatever you want with it uh so that's out of the question that the, the, they'll definitely make it fast uh yeah. not faster it'll, it'll make it uh, in, at an there'll be more, more implementations yeah. just naturally yeah, and especially with UE5, uh, we've seen at least with like, um, especially with XCSS and DLSS, that the plugins there have just allowed those to be added into games in a, in a really easy way. You see it in just like random indie titles getting DLSS. That's not because they're integrating it; they're just double clicking a plugin, you know. Um, so that is all great stuff. Whether or not it is, what, can you read the aspect about it being more? pertinent to consoles am i am i mistake what was the exact word i think uh, i i'm kind of a bit puzzled about that as well but basically there's now open source code for fsr3 which basically makes it you know it's it's easier for developers to integrate it because it's there right okay i think that's the bottom line the question is you know we've discussed this before it's all about whether it's actually a good candidate for insertion into a console game because right you know, typically your game needs to run at 60 frames per second because that's what AMD says is the minimum for, for frame generation. And it's got to have overhead for the FSR3 processing. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I did some experiments with Immortals of Avia on a console spec uh, uh, system. And you could get from 40 to 60. Um, 60 upwards was problematic. Uh, for CPU reasons and also, you know, because the GPU has, you know, it's inherently limited on a console. Mm-hmm. We were getting to like 90 to 100, I think. And then there's still the whole question of VRR with FSR3. It's, well, we've got one developer, the Immortals of Avium developer, Ascendant Studio, saying they're going to do it. I'm, I still think there's a lot of questions to answer before others do that. Personally. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just it's like the use case. I do think it is more about PC, uh, but although PC is targeting VRR usually for most users. And when we get to the, you'll watch the end of my avatar video that I'm working on right now. And you'll see that the VRR situation for FSR three is not like a clean cut just yet. Um, it's not like perfect. So I don't know. I, I feel like. We're gonna. I want to see the first implementation of it, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be on PS5 base. It may be a PS5 Pro game for the first time we see it. Oh, I'm almost feeling. So you think the extra horsepower there could be used to use the maybe the PS5? Yeah, to allow base it, spec. Yeah, but, to, yeah, it's it, because get like, that performance uplift to yeah, make FSR3 doable. Yeah, like the CPU performance, so that you're not so variable on that side to get it to getting up to a positive like 120 uh also the gpu performance will be more negligible by that point in time because fsr3 is expensive on a whatever class gpu the ps5 or xbox series x is it's it's as in it cost when you're gpu limited and console games tend to be very gpu limited because they're constantly using dynamic resolution 
to um, max out the GPU as much as possible, which is different than on PC because most games don't have dynamic res. It's, it's it's just a very different situation altogether. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'm hoping that FSR 3 will have the kind of DLL swap out situation that we have with uh, uh, with DLSS for sure. I think there is a, a, a route forward for that yeah. as opposed to baking it into the code. Like current the FSR being, is, right? Yeah, the the reason being that it's still early days for FSR three, and there are issues that need to be addressed, and you know the ability to swap the DLL on PC and basically get a better iteration of the technology is a, it would be a major win. Mm-hmm. Uh, PlayStation Pro, I mean PlayStation Five Pro, I'd be interested to see what Mark Cerny is thinking about in terms of upscaling or or, or frame generation so- solutions there. Um, I mean, we saw this week Kepler underscore L2, who seems to know a lot about the APU in the in the 5 Pro, basically ruled out the MPU. He said there wasn't one in there. So if there is some sort of secret source, it would have to be a Sony bespoke design if it's not leveraging FSR. 